Exploration 8. And this week we're going to look at freshwater habitats and the creatures that live in freshwater habitats. Now, first I want to say something about the first word, freshwater. What do I mean with freshwater? It is water that is not salty. So the ocean and the uh, a sea are saltwater habitats. And so they are not freshwater habitats. Okay? Now when I say the word habitats, you might wonder what does that mean? A, a habitat is a place where an organism lives. An organism like a fish or maybe an immature stage of an insect or like a shark. So organisms, they live in a certain kind of environment that could be an ocean or a sea or a lake that where they live is their habitat. Okay? That's the place where they feel at home and sometimes an animal will be very fussy about where it lives so it can live in all kinds of different habitats but uh, quite often an animal is very fussy about what, where it lives and so it has a very specific habitat in which it lives. So for instance, the shark, they live in saltwater habitats. They will not go into freshwater habitats, like they don't live in the Great Lakes, which is a good thing if you want to swim in the Great Lakes. So a habitat is a place where an animal lives. So today we're going to look at freshwater habitats. Okay, so a freshwater habitat could be something like this lake over here. Okay, you see this lake? So when you picture a lake, you probably picture something like this lake here. Now, how can a freshwater habitat, how can it be different from this lake? What might be some differences? Well, one big difference, uh, for no, first I want you to think about this, okay? How could a freshwater habitat be different from this one? Well, think for a moment. Maybe the size of the lake can be different. So you have different size lakes. But notice that the water is not really flowing in this lake. So can you think of a freshwater habitat where there's a lot of flowing going on? Ah, you are thinking about this river here. This is the Colorado River. And the Colorado River flows rapidly and, and tumbles over boulders and as it tumbles over boulders and it, it foams, it, it, uh, you see a lot of white water, you, you've heard of the word white water rafting. I know that in Tennessee for instance there's a, a, a river called the Little River and it, so there's a lot of rocks there and you can do a bit of white water rafting there. So you can have this river or you can have this lake, right? So those are two different habitats. One flows a lot and one doesn't flow a lot. Now can you think of some other differences between different bodies of fresh water, different freshwater habitats? Well, this lake over here looks pretty clear. So the sunlight can go down a long ways, right? How about this lake? No, that looks pretty cloudy, a lot of sediments, a lot of sand, silt or clay is floating around in the water so now the sun cannot go down as deep. Now you might, might ask yourself, so what has this to do with animals, right? What has this to do with creatures? Well, every animal needs a certain kind of habitat and a certain kind of water that it lives in. So some creatures will love the, all the sediments in the water they do quite well because there's no competition maybe maybe the other creatures that like a lot of sunlight are not there so they got all the space for themselves so every freshwater habitat has its own advantages okay how about this body of water how is that different from the first lake that we saw well this lake notice that the mountains that you see have snow on them okay they have snow on them. Well, that snow melts and that water melts and goes into the lake. So what do you think the temperature of the lake is? It's very cold, very cold lake. One time 
Uh, I was with my brother in the northern part of France, and our little float, it was a little, little um, you know, uh, inflatable boat, it tipped over and we fell in. I've never been so cold in my life, it was so freezing cold at water, that we didn't have a chance, we didn't want to stay in the water so long to turn the, the inflatable upside down and the right way up. So we just sat on the bottom of the boat, we, we just jumped out of the water so quick, because it was like 10 degrees Celsius, it was freezing cold, because there were mountains all around it, and we were in a lake that had fresh and uh, uh, melt water from the mountains. So the temperature of the water can be very different. Yeah? So we saw a couple of differences already. So the size of the, okay, whether it flows or not, that's the first one, no, does it flow or not? And the other difference that we noticed was uh, how cloudy it is, right? Is the sun, is the sun able to penetrate? The next difference that we just mentioned is how cold is it? What's the temperature of the water? Some animals like warm temperatures, some like cold temperatures. Okay, what is another difference in freshwater habitat? Well, some of the rivers, they flow very slowly and smoothly, and some of them have rapids in them and they go very quick and they, they, they tumble over stones. And some creatures really like this tumbling over stones. There's more oxygen in the water. All these creatures that are in the water, they need oxygen. They need, uh, and then some of them need a lot of oxygen. So they do much better in water that tumbles over rocks and has a lot of um, air mixed in with the, uh, with the water. Some of them have more vegetation growing around it. Okay, like this one over here. A lot of vegetation is growing around the edges. Okay? And some animals, they like it when the vegetation that grows around the lake falls in the lake and gives it more nutrition. Okay. And then you have this one. What's the difference between the last picture and this one? No vegetation, right? Okay, there's no vegetation growing around here. And so therefore, there's not much uh, dead leaves and dead plant material and so there's not very many nutrients in the water. And some creatures are quite fine with that. Okay, now look at this one. What do you think that is? Any idea what it is? That's a tricky one, isn't it? It's a ditch. <laughs> it's a ditch. So sometimes after a rain, the water just collects in a low spot and it just sits there. And do you think any creatures are in, in the ditch? In, in a a little ditch on the side of the road that dries up. Yeah, actually there are some creatures. They can live in the water in a ditch only for a short period of time. And then they somehow manage to survive when it all dries up. And then the next time it rains, then the next generation comes again. So some creatures can handle uh, being dry on a regular basis. And now look at this one over here. This picture over here. What do you think? This is very different from all the other freshwater bodies that we've seen. What is different? The trees are right in the water. The trees are right in the middle of the water. And so this is a bijou. Uh, and uh, some creatures love the shade and don't want to be in the sun. Okay, and then you have a body of water. We have a lot of floating plants. Okay, some don't have floating plants. This one has a lot of floating plants. Just want you to realize now how, how much variety there is in freshwater habitats. And because there's so many different varieties of habitat, we have all these different kinds of creatures that look different, they have different needs, and different, uh, different ways of survival. They are created in such a way that they can live very comfortably in all these different habitats. And so, See how God made all these different environments so that all these different creatures are able to live there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find a fresh water habitat close to where we live and we're going to collect some of that water and then we're going to see what creatures, what small creatures are in that body of water. We're not going to catch big fish. We're going to catch very small organisms that live in these freshwater habitats. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. Let's do it.
So what we're going to do this week is we're going to look at freshwater habitats. I already told you about that earlier in this video. So what do we need to do in order to catch some freshwater creatures? Well, there's a couple of items that we're going to need. So you're going to need some kind of a container that is see-through. So something like this will do. This had some nails in it. So I can use this container. I can also use uh, glass and my collection. I can add it to this, this, this vase, which uh, is see-through, as you can see. And if I put the creatures in there, I can see all the creatures that are in here. But uh, you don't have to bring this into the swamp or in with the, by the river. Um, all you need to do is just grab a pail and put all the creatures in the pail and then later when you get home you put them in something see-through uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use I have an old aquarium so I'm going to put all the creatures that I find I'm going to put them in an old aquarium and uh, the old aquarium I mean it may have a little crack at the top or uh, as long as it doesn't have a crack at the bottom uh, you can find used aquariums really cheap because people get into the hobby, they have it for a couple of years and they get tired of it and then they want to get rid of the aquarium. And when people get rid of the aquarium, I go like, great, hey, I'll have it. And often you can even get them for free. So I'm going to go out with the pail and I'm also going to take this with me. All right, a net. So I'm going to use this net to catch uh, little leaves or uh, plant material from the, from the water. And then also I'm going to take with me a scoop. So uh, I'm going to take a, this a yogurt container with me. Okay, so I got a pail. I have a yogurt container. I have a net. Uh, if you don't have a net, that's okay. You should still be able to catch a lot of things with your yogurt container. All right, let's go hunting. <laughs> hey, look who's here. Hey, hello. Hey Maddox, we're going to catch some uh, fish. No, we're not going to catch any fish. I can't catch a fish with a yogurt container. No. Uh, right now I'm walking through the forest and I noticed that most leaves have come off the trees. But then there are some trees that are still almost green. Uh, you can see that behind me. You can see some trees that are almost green still. And they drop their leaves a lot later, especially beech trees here. They are mostly green still. But if you look at some of the maples, a lot of the maple leaves have fallen off. A lot of the oak leaves have come off already. Uh, but yeah, things are changing. New seasons. Uh, who knows what we'll find? The challenge is, of course, to find things in the winter. But you'll be surprised how many organisms, how many creatures are hiding somewhere in the winter time. And it's sometimes a little tricky to find them, but there are ways to find them and to see them. And that's what we're going to try to do. So this is the water from which we're going to take some plant material and we're going to see what kind of creatures are in here. So as you can tell, there are no big great fish in here, maybe a frog or two, but we're especially interested in small creatures. So we're going to see if there are any plants that we can put in the container and the pail take with us. Great. So I'm going to take, okay, I'm going to take this yogurt container and I'm going to try this. I have my boots on, so it should be okay if I step in this. It shouldn't be too deep. There we go. And notice I was especially interested in, oh, better not fall. I'm especially interested in these things. Okay, I just scooped some up. I have no idea if there's any creatures in here, but I'm going to take this and put it in the pail. Okay, so I'm going to dump this in the pail. 
So I'm going to just scoop a little bit more here, some of these. Okay, so I'm going to dump that also in the pail. Okay, this water is a little murkier. Okay, let's put it in there as well. I'm going to take the net now. I'm going to try to scoop some with the net. We'll see, we don't see much yet, but you'll, you'll wait and see. There. See anything moving? I think I see a fish. That would be cool. Okay, I need more water. Now we're going to get to the most exciting part. We're going to see what we caught. And I'm going to put the contents of the pail inside the aquarium. Okay. So you want to put the organisms in very gently. So just try not to splash too much. You might hurt them if, if you pour too hard. And also make sure that you don't add any other like water from the tap. Because if you add water from the tap, it has chlorine in it. And the, a lot of organisms may die when they are exposed to that. So if you want to add more water to it, uh, don't use the tap just get more from the pond that you got the water from so is there any is there anything swimming around look at that does that look like a fish that does look like a fish doesn't it all right so once you have put all the water and whatever you caught and all the plant vegetation when you put it in the aquarium now watch very carefully what you can see at first it looks like oh there's not that much in there i saw one little fish and that was it but already after a few minutes i started watching and i see all kinds of things moving around in the water and if you give it a bit more time and the water clears up you'll see even more. So a couple things to remember, okay? You want to make sure that you don't add chlorinated water, but fresh water from the water that you got it from. Um, right now, I find the aquarium has only a little bit of water in it. Okay, if, I don't know, you, no, you can't see that right now. And the, water, the aquarium only has a, a little bit of water in it. And you might find that there's not enough depth that you can see things swimming around so you may want to put it in a smaller container and i might actually do that i might put it in a smaller container so that there's more depth of water where you can see things swimming around right now it's pretty shallow uh, so i might just do that another thing to remember is that uh, some of these uh, organisms that are swimming around in the water are actually immature stages of insects that will start to fly. So I want to make sure that you uh, don't put it in your living room and then find that you have all kinds of mosquitoes flying all over the place in your house and you're wondering why are all these mosquitoes here? That's maybe because the larvae were in the water and they are uh, they emerged from the water uh, so you keep an eye on that. Maybe you have to put it outside so that if any flying insects come out that uh, they don't end up in your house. Or what you can do too is you can put a netting over there or like a cheesecloth. Remember we used, we used a cheesecloth to keep the caterpillars in their cage. So you may want to actually put cheesecloth over top just in case there are insects that are otherwise would fly away in your living room. And your parents or your sisters may not exactly like that. All right, so now what do you do? You're going to see what kind of organisms you can find in the water. And we're going to talk on Friday about all the different things, all, all the different things that you found in the water. And hopefully you found all kinds of different organisms. But if you did not find any organisms yet, just wait for a week or two, and we might find it later on. All right, see you Thursday.